Absolutely. No, no. Thank you for that, Paul. And I want to go back to one of your <laughs> earlier points, talking about digital twin and some of the values of yeah. digital twin, because longtime listeners will yeah. know that I, as Dave, am like absolutely fascinated by digital twin. I, as I've said, I, I've designed some facilities yeah. in the past that if I were to do it again, I would get rid of reams of engineering graph paper on tables yeah. and would just go simulate it because it would save so much time and we could get a one-to-one -one realistic okay. example as opposed to I'm, me sitting there cutting out little squares to try to get a mostly one-to-one -one iteration of the size of everything. <laughs> I have been there and yeah. we've talked yeah. about aerospace applications. We've talked a little yeah. bit about automotive applications. We've had Colm Gavin on Siemens yeah. on a couple of times and I will have to go dig that up. Yeah. So he was on episode 42 and then he was recently on episode 150. Okay. He's talked a bunch about that and we've had a number of digital twin conversations. But yeah. you brought up a really yeah. interesting point of there's simulation of these facilities as groups are going out to get investors, yeah. as you're going to the EPCs, as you're going yeah. to these other organizations, yeah. so you can start the optimization before there's money on the table and the money has all been aggregated. And then it's, hey, can we get a little bit of yeah. money to do this digital twin? So can you maybe explain what that process yeah. looks like and where everyone sees the value and maybe who is driving the use of the simulation and digital twin so early in the process, please? There's a, there's a lot to unpack in there, but I think there's some great points that we need to cover. It, also, it all starts off with the, the customer end user and then the willingness of really the engineering firm, design firm to have confidence that, that this is appropriate for what they need to do. But I'll go back to the investors. What I'm seeing on the projects that I've been using this concept and approach with is most of the time when they're looking at a pro forma or a business plan for a new facility, it's just a you know, to your point, it's pages of dead tree spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet printouts. Now with, and the digital twin is pretty straight. It, it can be put together in a matter of, I would say, you know, uh, a minimal system, you know, uh, 40, 80 yeah. hours, we can put a really good system together. Now, obviously there's a more fidelity uh, need to go in. I'm just being generic here. But the reality is that you can show that investor community uh, exactly how, it's not just the, the physicality of the building shell and what the, the the silhouettes and outlines of the machines will be, but you can start showing them moving mm -hmm. and running. And then the other thing too is it's not just the the eye candy of seeing the visual. It's really fascinating when you look at what NVIDIA can do with the graphic mm -hmm. engines and they go to the industrial metaverse when you compare that to one of Colm's visual simulations of mm -hmm. his facilities. And I totally agree with you. There's wheels and wings. They've got it pretty well down. But looking at these other industries that probably may not have had the right appropriate uh, on, uh, the mm -hmm. money or even, you know, the inclination to look at this, this is quite refreshing, I think. And the feedback I'm getting from executives at EPC firms and really billion dollar investment firms is this is the right way to be looking at substantiating, supporting a business. The other thing, too, is we look at the revenue streams of the products mm -hmm. that come through. I'll give an example. We're not getting too much details, but we can look at, obviously, ribeye mm -hmm. steaks as a prime output of a meat plant is one thing. But then let's take a look at some of the other components that typically may or may not have been of high value. I've got a, a great one of my investors. He is looking at the reselling of the cattle bones. As he puts it, why do we give a, one of our man's best friend? a plastic bone made in China at $6 when we can get probably a pound of prime meat bones for, for $6. So what we can do is we can look at the green comment yeah. I mentioned earlier, but also we yeah. can look at revenue streams of what other products can we use. And back to the sustainability, let's absolutely maximize 100% of the input into that animal unit and basically do that in a way that is good stewardship of the animal, but also uh, of, of what we are doing as individuals uh, and, and consumers. I, I, I think that this is, the eye candy is interesting, but more importantly is how it supports the business model. How do we get thousands of people to come and work at the facility? And then COVID really showed uh, that, that the uh, protein world, uh, the challenges of worker availability or non-availability because of the high reliance of these manual steps. So I think that to me is, is some of the important aspects. And then last but not least, the fact that I can do an energy summary of the load profile, that's, I think is, is quite useful in terms of, in particular today, everyone's talking about battery storage, where we see it in vehicles, but look what Tesla did. They took the engine and turned it into the mm -hmm. power wall. So I think, I think the digital twin 
besides the visualization and then the code generation, which is another critical component, and then the virtual commissioning. And we don't need to get into that right now. But I think the, the comments that I was making earlier in this sort of early design phase, this FEL2 phase of preliminary design and basic design and conceptual or conceptual and preliminary design, it could be very valuable. And to your point, we don't have to mock up or build a prototype. We can do that in that virtual space. So I think that's something for all of us to consider. 